Hello everybody. This video demonstrates my benchtop power supply, which I've designed and built over the past few months. It includes features such as uh, four channels, uh, 0 to 12 and a half volts, current limiting, digital set points, configuration and calibration. First we see the case and the internals. As you can see, the lid and the sides are secured by screws which you can then take out and just lift the entire lid right off of it. There's ventilation ports to make sure everything stays cool. On the inside we have four identical channels which are made from the same circuit board the three of them along the left hand side that you can see there are all the positive ones and the negative one is on the other side. There's two switch mode power supplies which are plus which are configured as plus and minus 15 volts each of which can source up to 7 amps of current. The fan on the back of the case blows directly over the first two channels, which are the higher amperage ones. Those two can go up to 5 amps each. The other two channels, the third channel and the fourth one, which is negative, can supply up to 1.5 amps each. And the components are, are sourced differently, so they have provide more accurate current sensing. The digital display with the set points and readouts is controlled by an Atmega AVR32U4 microcontroller. The user interface consists of two rotary encoders. The one on the left controls the voltage, the one on the right controls the current. Initially when you start up you see a list of all the channels. Hold down the rotary encoder on the left to get into the edit mode and you can just push the ones on the left or the right to switch between different channels. Each channel has toggle switches to turn the power on and off for a given channel. You can modify the voltage and the current in either fine or coarse modes depending on how fast you turn the, the encoder. And you can see that current limiting kicks in depending on what the set point of the current value is. Here we're going to verify the actual voltage output of the power supply. So we set the multimeter in voltage mode, plug it in, and sure enough, we're pretty much dead on. Here we're going to demonstrate current limiting. So initially, so you can see first of all we're on channel 3. Initially we're just going to try shorting the outputs together. You can see we have the set point to 25 milliamps, and as we do it, the current limiting is enabled the red light goes on and the total, the actual current, does not exceed 25 milliamps. We're now going to hook up an LED directly to, to the output. Now as you know if you uh, tried hooking up an LED to a non-current limited power supply you would promptly blow the LED but here it doesn't. We are once again limited to 25 milliamps. We can adjust this and if you look at the brightness of the LED, as we turn the limit down, it goes down. As we turn the limit up towards 35 milliamps, the LED gets progressively brighter. Next up, we use the multimeter again, this time in current mode, to verify the total current output. As you see, we have a set point to 37 milliamps, plug it in, and sure enough, we're limited to about 37 milliamps total. Next, I'm going to use a, a dummy load, a variable dummy load, to show the, the higher amperages. Now, in this case, I'm actually not running it through the multimeter, but I have done so uh, on off video and showed that it works. So here's the dummy load. It's just a little thing I hacked together. It has a knob to control the, the current output hooked it up to channel 3 initially and as I turn the knob you can see it 
goes into current limiting mode. I'm now increasing the current set point to the maximum for channel 3, which is 1.5 volts, or 1.5 amps, sorry. And as you can see, it's the, the actual value is going up as I turn the knob until current limiting kicks in. Channel 3 and channel 4 have a, a lower current set point than the other ones, so they, they can't quite reach 1.5 amps. The uh, other channels, channel 1 and channel 2, they can go all the way up to 5 amps. And so in, in this case here, you can see I'm testing at 8 volts, 3 and three and a quarter amps. And as I increase the current output on the dummy load, it sure enough goes up to around 3 and a bit amps, give or take. I can increase the set point further and adjust as as needed with the uh, with a knob. If we uh, press and hold encoder one, we'll get back to the main screen, and here you can see the actual amperages are being shown as I as I move the knob again. And again, the channels are lined up in order. So channel 1, 2, 3, and then 4 is negative. In order to simplify the configuration and calibration, instead of doing everything on the microcontroller, I control it with a computer over USB. So we plug in the USB cable and start to run the calibration software. It's just a little Python script. And you see options there, you can change calibration of channels and then other things, change the voltage or current. Here you can show the calibration, so this is the calibration points that have already entered into the system. You can uh, recalibrate everything or just a single one, so in this case I selected do everything. I'm just going to quit out of there though because I don't really want to recalibrate everything, it takes a few minutes. Um, here you can see the startup voltage is uh, 5 volts and you can do the same thing for current. You have the calibration of the different values, you can recalibrate, you can change the power on. So right now it's set to 50 milliamps and I'm going to change that just to demonstrate here. I'm going to change that to be uh, 500 milliamps and at this point it's now been saved to EEPROM on the microcontroller. So we quit out of there, uh, go back to the power supply, turn it off, and turn it back on again. And if we go into edit mode we'll see that the current limit for channel 1 is, lo and behold, 500 milliamps, just like we configured. And finally we have firmware updates. Now it wouldn't be very fun if you had to take the entire system apart to do a firmware update, so we have a little utility called PSDFU which sets the power supply into device firmware update mode, which we can then upload uh, our, our program uh, just over the DFU programmer. So you can see it's uh, uploaded properly go back, the display is blank, that's what shows that it's in DFU mode. If we now cycle power, it will come back with the new version of the firmware. It's as simple as that. To build your own, please visit digitalcave.ca slash PSU for plans, schematics, and instructions. Thanks for watching!